Hey, this is Math 2, Unit 9, Worksheet Number 6, Factoring Polynomials Completely. Okay, so again, this is more practice working with factoring, except now they're going to just get a little more complex than we had yesterday, right? Our leading coefficient term might be another number that would split up a couple ways. So it's just going to be a little more complicated, maybe take a little more guess and check to figure that out. So on the first one, we have 9g squared. And just, just what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just doing 3g, 3g. Not any reason except just I like to break it apart. I just, I, I like smaller numbers. I'm gonna start there and see what happens. Okay, 16 could be 16 times two, or six times one, eight times two, four times four. Those are options for these second terms, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and start. I know I need to get to negative 24G with my outsides and insides. I have a three and a three. So I'm gonna put a four and a four because that gets me a 12G and a 12G which I want them to be minus a negative 24. So a negative 12 and a negative 12 equals a negative 24. That's looking good. So I put a minus and a minus. Double check this last term. Negative four times negative four is indeed a plus 16. So we're set. Three G minus four times three G minus four or three G minus four squared. <laughs> Number three, here we have nine B the third and I got 14 out there. Now this one, seeing how large this middle term is, it's a pretty big number, right? I'm gonna go ahead and keep my nine as a, well, first I'm gonna take a B out of the whole thing. Okay, so I actually have, I'm gonna end up with a B, nine B squared plus 65 B plus 14, okay? So I'm gonna take a B out of the whole thing, there's too many Bs there. So I end up with a nine B squared there, which gives me a B right there. And on the 14 one, I could break that into 14 times one or seven times two. I need to get up to 65. What I notice right away is that if I multiply nine times seven, I get to 63B, right? Um, yep, 63B, yep, not B squared, sorry, 63B. And then on the inside, that's pretty close there. If that's a two, I'd add two B and I'm at 65. So I'm gonna add that and add that. So I have B times nine B plus two times B plus seven. Okay, so just helps a little bit to recognize some quick facts. Nine times seven, 63, gets me where I wanna go, add two more and I'm set. Number five right here, 36, 60, and 25. Right, I don't see any way to take anything out of that except for the X, I could take an X out, that's for sure. So we have 36 X squared plus 60 X plus 25. Now over here, I have some squared numbers. It's 36 and five. So let's see what happens here. If I break this apart just with some squares, I would do six X and six X. I could do a five and a five for the 25. And then I have a 30 and 30. Because I want 60, I'll add those together. So I get a plus and a plus for a 30 X plus 30 X to get the 60 X. And that's how I do number five. Number seven, nothing I can factor out of that. So I'm just gonna work with what I have. So we'll start with a two S and an S, and I still have the six here. Six will be six times one, three times two, looking to get that 13 S in the middle. So if I put a six right here, I'm already at 12 S, and I put the one there, I'm adding one S to get to 13. So that becomes a positive six X, a six and a positive one for number seven. For number nine, in this one, I could take a D out of everything. So I have three D squared plus 20 D plus 12. And now let's factor this part. I'll have a three D and a D. And for the 12, I know I need to get to 20. So I could have a, I could do a 12 times one, which would get me too much. I could do a six, which gives me 18. D and a two, six times two is 12, plus two D. I want that to add up to 20, so these will both be positive. So D times three D plus two times D plus six. Number 11, I can factor a two out of all of those. We have two times three R squared minus five R minus 12. And then we factor this one out, three R and R. I'm looking at the 12, I need to get to five. So if I did a four, which is 12, 
minus 3, that gets me to 9. So that's not quite going to work, is it? All right, so let's switch that around. Let me do a 4 and a 3. That gets me 9 and a 4. I'm looking to get to 5, a negative 5. So I want that to be negative and that to be positive. So make a 9 minus 3 and a positive 4. For number 13, I could factor a 25 out of all those. So I end up with 4t squared minus 4t plus 1. And then I could factor this part. And I can make this a 2t plus 1. Or actually a 2t, sorry, I want to get a minus there. I won't do a plus quite yet. Let's do a 2t and a 2t and then a 1 and a 1. Because I want a minus 4t, I'm going to make these both minuses. So I have a minus 2t and another minus 2t for a minus 4t in total. Number 15, same idea. I could take a 4 out of each of those as well as a g out of each of those. So let's take a 4g out and we're left with g squared plus 6g plus 4. So 4g is here, and uh, let's separate this one. We have a g and a g, and the 4 is gonna be a 4 and a 2, all right? So here's a 4 and a 2, and I wanna add that. So I have 2 plus 4 to get 6. So we're gonna add both those, those terms there. For 17, which expression is not a factor? That means <laughs> you wanna factor that out and see which one doesn't belong. <laughs> Right away, we can see that we could take a 2 out of each of those as well as an x. So this one's going to be just fine. So I know I have a 2x when I factor that out. And when I factor 2x out, I'm left with 2x, uh, 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. So now I need to factor that into one of those two things. It's kind of nice when they give you some options here. So I could put a 2x and an x, all right? And then I'm, I know that that's, one of these is going to work here. So one of these is going to work probably and one of them's not. <laughs> okay. So I know that x plus 3 will work. So I have a 3 and 3 times 1 is there. So double check this. I get 6 and 1. Add that up to make 7. So 2x plus 1 is in the mix. So this is the one that does not belong. It's not a factor. So we'll put it on the back side for a few more problems before we wrap up today's lesson and really this unit. Number 19 is a word problem talking about a volume of a rectangular prism. So for a volume of prism, right, you're going to be doing a, a you know, a, a length times a width times a height or, or a width times a height. You end up with three terms to multiply to get a volume of something, right? So now let's take a look at this problem. We have 22w to the third minus 7w squared minus 2w. And we're going to factor this out. And the chances are we're going to end up with three factors. And each one will be one of our, like our length, our width, our height. Doesn't matter which is which, we'll have three terms. So right away I can take a w out of everything. So I end up with 22w squared minus 7w minus 2. And then I factor this part. And I can do a 11w times 2w. Okay, because I know I have negative 7, so I don't make it too large there. If I make this a 1 and this a 2 for 2 times 1, now I have 11. And there we have 4. And if I do 11, I want a negative 7. Let's make this a negative. That's a positive. So negative 11, positive 4, and that's it. So what are my terms? I have a w. I have 11w plus 2. And I have 2w minus 1. Those are the three factors that could be the possible dimensions of that rectangular prism. All right, I'm going to do number 20. I'm going to have to skip around a little bit. So 20, we have squared and squared. Okay. So what that means is when I have the difference of two squares, I have x minus, and here I have uh, 5y, or I can do x plus 5y, and then x minus 5y. And that's because that's a square, a square, and a square, and it's a subtraction, so it's a difference of two squares. So that's just a quick, easy way to do that one, just like that. Number 22. Okay, it's not the difference of two squares, but I do have an x I can put there and an x I can put there for that part, no problem. Now I have this 33. And the 33, I gotta turn it into an eight when I look at the middle and the outside terms. So I can do 11 times three, and that's because 11 minus three equals eight. So I'll put an 11 and a three. I want a positive eight, so I'll make that bigger and that's smaller. So I end up with 
11x minus 3x to give me 8x. All right, so x plus 11, x minus 3. Oh, I need to put my y in there, sorry. And these are y's and y's because that's a y squared. Number 23, again, I have a situation where I have some square numbers, right? But it's not a difference of two squares. I have a trinomial, so it's not going to be quite so easy, but it's still not too bad. I'll put a 5a and a 5a, and I'm just going to put a 4b and a 4b because that's what's there. I need a negative 40. So that becomes 20ab and 20ab because I want it to be negative. I'll make them both negative because two negatives are going to make a positive right there. 25. We can fact we can put x in both of those, no problem. And now I have negative 63y squared. So I know the y goes there. 63 is going to probably be a 9 and a 7. I need to get something that combines together to make 2. So I'll put a 9 and a 7, and 9 will be positive, and I'll make the 7 negative, so that 9 minus 7 gives me 2. Double check those there. This is 9yx, or 9xy, minus 7xy. So that works out for the middle term. Double check 9 times a negative 7 is negative 63, and we're set. These last ones here I'm going to let you do on your own. They are simply review from prior lessons to get you ready for your upcoming tests. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.